<coughs> إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما We begin by thinking and praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى we seek his help, we seek his guidance, we seek his aid, we seek refuge in him from the evil around us and from the evil within ourselves and from the evil consequences of our poor choices. And we bear witness that there is absolutely no one and nothing worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exclusively alone. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last and final messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many places in the Qur'an commanded and reminded us to renew our taqwa of him. And of the fruits of taqwa is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save those who have taqwa. وَيُنَجِّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ بِمَفَازَتِهِمْ لَا يَمَسُّهُمُ السُّوءُ Allah says those that have taqwa will be saved and no harm or evil will afflict them. But in order for a person to have taqwa, they must have a sound heart. They must have a clean heart. And the Prophet ﷺ alluded to this prerequisite and this fact in the hadith when he said, وَأَشَارَ إِلَىٰ صَدْرِهِ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ As he was pointing to his heart and he said, أَتَّقْوَى هَا هُنَا أَتَّقْوَى هَا هُنَا أَتَّقْوَى هَا هُنَا Pointing towards his heart. And the Prophet ﷺ gave us a clear example of what happens when a person's heart is devout of taqwa. Void of taqwa. Perhaps the image, the external image may be pleasing or impressive. But the Prophet ﷺ said, بِحَسْبِ مْرِئٍ مِّنَ الشَّرِّ أَنْ يَحْيِرَ أَخَاهُ الْمُسْلِمِ The Prophet ﷺ said in this Arabic phrase, it is sufficient, it is enough for a person to collect evil and sharr if they were to only do this one thing, and what was it? To despise, to belittle, to put down their Muslim brother. If that was the only thing they did, they would have gotten enough evil to destroy themselves. The Prophet ﷺ was sitting with the companions one day. And this is a hadith narrated in the book of Musnad Imam Ahmad. And there is much discussion amongst the scholars about the authenticity of it, but the vast majority have graded it as sound. On the authority of Anas ibn Malik, he says, We are sitting with the Prophet وسلم, and he directed our attention to the entrance of the masjid, and he said that a man will enter upon you, and he is of the dwellers of Jannah. This is someone who will be in Jannah. So naturally, the attention of the companions turned to see exactly who this person will be. And a man entered, and his name is not mentioned in the narration because that's not important. But a man entered and he was not someone famous. It was not Abu Bakr, it was not Umar, it was not Uthman, it was not Ali, it was not Abu Huraira, it was not Mus'ab, it was not any of the famous companions that we hear of. We don't know what his name was, but we know who he was not. They said the water was dripping from his beard, from the wudu. So he had a beard, the companions had beards. And he came inside in the masjid, he performed his salah and then he left. And that was the end of that. Day two, 
The companions are sitting with the Prophet ﷺ. And again, he says, a man will enter upon you and he is of the dwellers of Jannah. And lo and behold, it's the same guy again. Day three, the Prophet ﷺ says the same thing again. And they look and it's the same guy. And they don't know anything special about him. So one of the companions followed him, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As radiallahu anh, and he was young at the time. He said, man, I gotta find out what's so special about this guy. And so he follows him. And he came to him and he said, I've had a dispute with my father, and the result of which is that I am not allowed to speak to him for three days. There was an oath and I'm not gonna speak to him for three days. So, can you give me residence? Can you give me shelter in your house? Can I stay with you for three days and three nights so that I don't break my oath? And he said, sure, welcome, come on in. And so Abdullah ibn Amr stayed with this man for three days and three nights. Observing his actions. What's he gonna do? He's gonna be praying Qiyam all night. He's gonna open up the stash of gold and give a massive amount of sadaqah. He'll be fasting the next day. There's something really amazing that he does. What is it? And so Abdullah ibn Umar says, I watch him all night, waiting for him to get up and pray Qiyamul Layl. And the guy is not waking up. Ghayra annahu, except Abdullah notices that when he flips from side to side, he would mutter, La ilaha illallah. So he's making some dhikr as he's flipping from one side to another in his bed. But he's sleeping. No Qiyamul Layl. So then he's like, okay, it's almost Fajr time, he's gonna get up and have suhoor, because he'll be fasting tomorrow. Sleeps all the way till Fajr. Next day, the same thing. The next night, okay, maybe day one he was a little bit tired. The next night, the next day, the same thing. And the third day, the third night, the same thing. So when that third day came and it was time for Abdullah to leave, he was disappointed. He came to this man, this companion, he said, you know, what I said happened between me and my father, that didn't happen. Now the scholars, they commented on this and they said, Abdullah ibn Umar did not lie, but he spoke in a vague manner so that it would be interpreted as that quarrel with his father happened at that time, but it actually happened much earlier before. He says, that didn't happen. You know, all I wanted to do is I wanted to live with you and see you in your most private moments. Because the Prophet ﷺ said a man will enter and he is from the people of Jannah. And you walked in three days in a row. So I wanted to see what you got going on. And the man said, whatever you've seen, this is what I do. I'm not hiding anything. So Abdullah turned around to leave. And as he walked away, the man called him back. He called Abdullah ibn Umar back again. And he said, ما هو إلا ما رأيت. Again, he said, you know, there's nothing except from that which you have seen me do. غَيْرَ غَيْرَ أَنِّي لَا أَجِدُ فِي نَفْسِي لِأَحَدٍ مِّنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ غِشًّا وَلَا أَحْسِدُ أَحَدًا عَلَى خَيْرٍ أَعْطَاهُ اللَّهُ إِيَّهُ He said, the only thing that I can think of is that I make sure that there is nothing in my heart towards any other Muslim in terms of deceit or trickery or cheating, and I don't envy any human being for any goodness that Allah has given them. No hasad. So Abdullah ibn Umar responded, he said, هَذِهِ الَّتِي بَلَغَتْ بِكْ وَهِيَ الَّتِي لَا تُطَاقْ He said, this is what got you to that place that the Prophet ﷺ said. This is how you earn Jannah, and this is something that can't be achieved. This is a tough one. If he had told him, pray all night and fast all day, maybe you can push yourself. Maybe you can get some stamina, some energy and push yourself. But this is not actions of the limbs that we're talking about here. But this is from the category of actions, as the scholars say, أَعْمَالُ qulub, The actions of the heart. The heart has feelings and it has actions as well. There are a'mal. If we were to do a little survey here, if we were to pass around cards, just to us over here, let's not go outside of our masjid. Pass out cards. And write down on this card, write down 
what comes to your mind from all of your mistakes and your sins and your poor choices and the crimes you've committed write all that down anonymously don't put your name write all of that down don't worry we're not going to do the exercise but imagine if we were to do that probably most cards will have written on it what I missed salah I don't pray you know there was like this week last Ramadan I was just like yeah, I don't want to fast um, I stole some money I did this I committed zina I had an illicit relationship with the opposite gender that I wasn't supposed to have we think about all of these sins and these poor choices and these mistakes how many cards do you think will have written on them I don't have tawakkul upon Allah I don't have hope in Allah I am not loving for the sake of Allah and hating for the sake of Allah I have backbiting envy there's this hatred in my heart for somebody else how many of the cards do you think will have that written on it my assumption is very few if none at all because our imagination is always going towards these tangible physical actions but we have forgotten about the actions of the heart and they are difficult they require a lot of strength and perseverance and practice and that's why Abdullah Ibn Amr here said La tutaq. this one is difficult and it can be achieved but what he means here is that this one requires a lot of strength and that is why the reward for it was so great this was not a famous companion we don't hear about him in any amazing battle but he is a person that the Prophet ﷺ witnessed that he will be from the people of Jannah the actions of the heart repent to Allah he is the most forgiving most merciful Alhamdulillah wahda wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiya ba'da Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammadin abdika wa rasulika nabiyya al-ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira Amma ba'd The only people that will enter Jannah are the people that come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sound hearts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran Yawma la yanfa'u malun wa la banun illa man ata Allah bi qalbin salim on that day when no one's wealth or no one's progeny the size of your tribe the size of your crew the amount of wealth you come to Allah with is not what's going to benefit on that day that's not what the currency of that day is that's not how you purchase the commodity of Allah on that day but how illa man ata Allah bi qalbin salim the ones who will be saved are the ones who come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart as this companion that we have been reflecting over his story said that he did not have any ghish, any trickery, any deceit, any cheating, any ill feelings towards any Muslim or hasad, hasad, envy, this disease that eats away. The Prophet ﷺ said it eats away from the good deeds the way fire eats away at wood, just destroys it. This was the first sin ever committed in the heavens and the earth, hasad of Iblis. This was the sin that separated between the children of Adam. This was the disease that caused Qabil and Habil to fight until one killed the other. This was the disease that prevented Abu Jahl from entering into Islam. How many families have been torn apart because of hasad? How many relationships came to an end because of envy? How much money was lost? How much blood was spilled? Because the hearts couldn't get over hatred and negativity towards one another. And that's why when this companion was able to overcome that and purify himself of it, he didn't get up at night to pray Qiyam and he didn't fast all day, but he was of the people of Jannah. Now that's not to say that getting up at night to pray and fasting in the day is something we should belittle. These are virtuous acts of worship that we should do. But you and I, most of us are not getting up every night praying. And most of us are not fasting every day. Let's be real with one another. At the very least, and not at the very least, but very importantly, we can make sure that we come to Allah with a sound heart, with a clean heart. بِقَلْبٍ salim, Sound. Not afflicted with any of these diseases. How can we do so? 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, ثَلَاثٌ لَا يُغَلُّ عَلَيْهِنَّ قَلْبَ مُسْلِمٌ that there are three characteristics that if a Muslim were to embody them, their heart would be protected. This is an extra fortress, an extra protection from ghil. Ghil is any ill, negative disease or feeling in the heart. Allah says, the people that enter Jannah, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِم مِّنْ غِل Before people enter Jannah, any ill feelings will be removed from the heart. There's no negative emotions or bad feelings in Jannah. That's one of the greatest blessings in Jannah. May Allah unite us all there. What are these three things? One is very obvious. And the other two, perhaps you might not have expected them. First, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِخْلَاصُ الْعَمَلِ لِلَّهِ to be sincere in your actions towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that when we are doing any type of action or good deed or ibadah, we are not seeking reward or praise or pleasure of anyone or from anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا The believers when they did an act of kindness, they said, we do not want from you any reward or praise. We are doing this for the sake of Allah. That's number one. And number two, the Prophet sallallahu said, وَالنُّصْحُ لِأَئِمَّةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And sincere advice, sincere encouragement of good and forbidding of evil towards leaders amongst the Muslims. And again, our imagination. Our thoughts will automatically go towards leaders in very high positions. Leaders of state, leaders of big organizations. And although that applies and that falls under this meaning, leadership trickles down even to the smallest level. Every single one of us here has some amount of authority and some amount of leadership. Henceforth, we are all deserving of advice from one another. And the third, the Prophet ﷺ said, وَلُزُومُ جَمَاعَتِهِمْ And to stick with the community of Muslims. If the Muslims are commanding one another for good, reminding one another to stay away from evil, and sticking together, the Prophet ﷺ says, this is a protection from ghil, from ill feelings to enter your heart. Somebody that you have envy towards, you're not going to advise them to do any good. It doesn't happen. Those two can't exist in one heart at the same time. So the Prophet ﷺ is giving us actions to do preemptively to protect our hearts from ill feelings, from ghil, from any type of negativity, especially hasad and envy towards other believers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts and our actions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as He has gathered us here in His house, to gather us in the highest levels of Jannah. Brothers and sisters, we want to remind you that tonight we have our usual weekly family Friday night program. And that starts after Isha prayer. Isha is at 7.30. And the topic will be Islamic perspectives on people with special needs. We will have our very own Imam Sheikh Muhammad Faqih with that presentation. And also be reminded that CIU has, uh, is preparing to begin the winter quarter. And there are classes uh, that are going to be offered in the Arabic language in the uh, Prophets in the Qur'an, Wisdoms of the Prophet Wasallam. Each one of these is a separate course. And you can sign up and get more information at the table that they have set up for you at the lobby. So please pay them a visit and get more information on how you can benefit. Insha'Allah ta'ala. Allahumma shfi mardana wa marda al-Muslimin. Warhami Allahumma mawtana wa mawta al-Muslimin. Oh Allah, cure those amongst us that are sick. Oh Allah, forgive those amongst us that have passed away. Oh Allah, Unite the Muslims upon truth. Allahumma abrim lihadihi al-ummati amr al-rashida. Yu'azzu fihi ahlu ta'a. Wa yuhda fihi ahlu al-ma'asiyah. Wa yuqalu fihi kalimatu al-haq. La yakhsha qailuha fi Allahi lawma talaim. Allahumma a'izza al-islam wa al-muslimin. Wa a'li bi fadlika kalimatay al-haqqi wa al-deen. Wa ansur ibadaka al-muwahideen fi kulli makan. Wa ansur ibadaka al-mujahideen fi kulli makan. عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدي والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He will mention you واشكروه على نعمه وألائه يزيدكم Be grateful to Allah He will increase you ولا ذكر الله أكبر The remembrance of Allah is the greatest والله يعلم ما تصنعون Allah is fully aware of what you do وأقم الصلاة